Welcome to Alimentary, the podcast series where you'll not only learn about your amazing body, how it works, and of course why food is so important, but also pick up some simple recipes and lifestyle tips and tweaks, which will help you to influence your health in a positive way. We know that modern medicine is amazing, and it comes to our age when we get sick. However, we shouldn't wait until we're sick to focus on our health. So complementary therapies can help us to optimize and maintain our wellness. In a previous episode, we talked to Ermit Kyo about acupuncture. So in this episode, we're going to talk to another therapist called Ms. Melissa Costello about a therapy called kinesiology. And we will learn what it is and um, how it works and how it can be of benefit to us. So Melissa started down the complementary therapy road nearly 20 years ago when she studied reflexology and in her own words, she has never looked back. The main therapies that she practices are reflexology, EFT and kinesiology. So these all help. These are all therapies which help to bring the body back into balance. And when a client attends her clinic, she uses all of her gifts, knowledge and intuition to help them to feel better. During our chat, we focus on kinesiology and Melissa explains what happens during an appointment and how improving our energetic frequencies can benefit our health. Now, we also discuss a fascinating subject um, called ancestral healing. And ancestral healing focuses on discovering, exploring and healing traumas which have been passed down from our ancestors. And these traumas may subconsciously be impacting our behavior and so our lives. So thank you for joining us today. And I hope you enjoy my conversation with Melissa Costello. So, Melissa, thanks so much for coming on uh, the podcast today. And I am thrilled to be chatting to you about kinesiology and uh, to find out more about this therapy. So I wonder, would you mind starting off by just telling us, you know, what what is kinesiology? Well, good morning, Lynn. Lovely to be here. Very exciting. My first podcast. <sighs> and as I said, it's not my podcast, it's your podcast. No way. Um, it's yours today. Mine today. Yeah. Um, so when people ask, you know, what is it? And the most simple way for me to explain it is I find what is out of balance in the body using muscle testing. And then people kind of go, well, what's muscle testing? So I use an arm muscle or a leg muscle to check if the body needs some structural help, some emotional help, um, nutritional help, or as you could say, electrical, energetic. You know, the body w- runs on electrics. The heart works on electrical impulses. The brain works on electrical impulses. And that makes sense. It does. Absolutely. That's actually a really, really good explanation. And um, I suppose what kind of things can knock the body out of balance? The Really, the biggest one is stress, whether that's financial stress, whether that somebody cut you off in traffic and you, and nearly hit you, whether you've got a, a just a very sudden phone call that somebody has passed away. Mm. You know, anything that kind of shock the body a little bit. Yeah, like any sort of trauma. Any sort of trauma. Any sort of trauma. And it doesn't have to be trauma that that happened today or last week. Something may have happened to you 20 years ago or when you were small. And it's still having an effect on you, but you just don't realize it. Exactly. The body holds it if we don't body holds it. it. And the body adapts around it. So it becomes normal for you. Maybe you don't realize how poorly you're feeling because it's something that you've just got used to, a, a way that you've got used to feeling. Oh, Absolutely. And under the, under the kind of nutritional part of kinesiology, mm. a lot of people would associate kinesiologists with food sensitivity testing. And mm. and what happens in that case is that you have been eating something maybe your whole life that doesn't actually suit you. But because when you eat it, it doesn't make you get sick. You know, if, if we had something to eat and we immediately had to go to the toilet to get sick, you would think, oh, actually, that doesn't suit me. Yeah. But nine times out of 10, that's not what happens. What happens is the body does its best to break it down, to get it out of the body. And how you feel just becomes normal. And but then over- if after you've had that for a lifetime, mm-hmm. the body gets to, as I kind of say, saturation point where it goes, no, I can't tolerate cheese or bananas or whatever the thing is. And, it's the and the body just goes, no, because it kills your engine immediately. Whereas when we eat the food source that doesn't suit us that's us putting dirty diesel in us and the difference between us and the car is we keep going mm. the body but keeps we keep trying going to heal. totally we keep going but we keep going on a much lower level uh quality of life you know and as they say to clients 
if you exclude this week, for example, if you exclude it for the next four or five weeks and come back to me and see how you feel because your body gets a rest and then you kind of go, oh, actually, I, I didn't realize how lethargic I felt or how bloated I felt or, or down, actually. It affects your mood. It really can affect your, you know, your 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 mood because your hormones are carrying your blood. Your blood is made up of what you eat. You know, everything goes into that blood supply that flows through your body. And if it's stuff that doesn't suit you, it affects everything. So you're just functioning at a lower frequency. Those electrical impulses are maybe weaker. Massively. You're working mm. on. Yeah. As I say to some people, when 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 they realize what they're eating, they're, they're running on fumes. You know, they have no actual real energy to get them through the day. So they're relying on it's the cigarettes or the coffee run for another three or four hours. And when you then, continuously do that, the body gets wrecked. Of course, we get adrenal fatigue then. Massively. And people have, there is, a, you know, in kinesiology, we have where people have reversed adrenals, the state they can be in. So their adrenals don't know what rest is, which means then maybe every six to eight weeks, that person will get really sick because the adrenals just down tools and say, I literally can't do any more. And then it takes longer each time to get better from that because the adrenals are so low. And so, Melissa, what happens then in uh, an appointment with you, you know, or a treatment? You know, how how is that muscle testing carried out? So when somebody comes for uh, their, their their first appointment, I, sit, I, I go through my questionnaire, you know, I get as much detail as I can from them about their, their lifestyle, maybe operations, maybe medication they're on. A lot of people have accidents that they don't remember until yeah. they're in the room. They go, oh, actually, I was in a car crash or I broke my leg. All those things are a stress, are a stress on the body. So I kind of run through all that and find out just what is it to eat? Because it's not about judging them. It's about getting as much information. So when I find what it is that doesn't suit them or what's throwing them off that I'm able to say and show them this is not really working for your body if you choose to make a, a change so mm. when I go through that then they're up either well they can sit on a chair but generally they're on my plinth and you're using an arm muscle or a leg muscle and it's basically very gentle pressure that they just have to resist against and I have lots of test kits you know some for food you know fruit and veg meat um have some that really deals with the kind of the really chemical end of things, which would be, you know, viruses, fungus, bacteria, parasites, those kind of things. Because when the food you're eating doesn't suit you, it doesn't suit you, but it, but it suits all those microorganisms. Mm. You're like the you're like the nice hotel that they want to go and stay in because they'll keep getting the high fat, the high sugar, you know. All the stuff that they thrive on that doesn't suit you, but suits them, they will actually create those thoughts or cravings of, you know, oh God, I really, people kind of say, I can't eat one biscuit, I have to eat six biscuits. And it's not necessarily that they want six biscuits, but it's that feeling inside being created by these mini organisms mm. because that's what they live on. So when yeah. your food isn't changed, there's no reason for them to leave. Mm. I, I sometimes refer to them as, do you remember the movie Gremlins? And, you yes. know, you had then the bad Gremlins like Spike. <laughs> um, that is totally, that is totally yeah. what, what parasites, all those things are like, because exactly. they just come in, as I say to people, your body's your hotel. And mm. when you eat the, the bread or the cheese or whatever, the, the, the coffee, the thing that doesn't suit you it's like the bouncers on your front door of the hotel go off on a cigarette break exactly and, and anybody it, and everybody can move in <laughs> yeah, yeah it does help I think to give people visuals you know so that if they can imagine oh no that's spike that's craving that extra biscuit not me like you know I think yes and and just that that visual that you've you've given there as well I think that they're helpful to people you know that they can separate themselves from their cravings yeah because it's you know if if, if, if your body is the hotel and you've all these unwanted guests and you're busy just trying to clean up the mess mm. that these guests are making. You don't actually have time to ask them to leave because the food source hasn't changed. So they keep getting what they want and you're just trying, the body's just trying to do the best job it can yeah. in, in 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 full resistance. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It, what you're eating isn't conducive to good health for you. 
And then, Melissa, as well, just when you mentioned the, um, you know, the the electrical impulses and the energy in the body, the frequency in the body, do, do yeah. you uh, carry out any energy healing as well or energy um, adjustment or what, how would you refer to that? Yes, sometimes. Say, for example, somebody comes in with um, maybe constipation, very common. Everybody's had it at some stage. And with kinesiology, I'm able to determine whether it's actually a structural problem, you know, whether it's a nutritional thing. If it's food, yeah, you'll be impacted from a constipation point of view. Mm. Um, kind of emotionally, constipation tends to be about literally and physically what you're unable to let go of. And for a lot of people, that's grief because when something happens or somebody passes away or there's sudden shock and loss, the body just stops because it doesn't feel safe to let to have normal functioning going on. Mm -hmm. And that could be from somebody losing a parent 30 years ago that they've had constipation since that mm -hmm. because it's been such a, a traumatic thing. And what I use in kinesiology, we were taught to use backflower remedies right. so and if anybody's not familiar with them a lot of people are familiar with rescue remedy yes. that little yellow bottle and rescue remedy is great to be taken in times of shock loss grief and it's made up of the essence of five different flowers so specific for shock and loss but there are 38 flowers in that whole range so if somebody shows up that the constipation actually is either an emotional or, as you said, you know, an energetic reason, I would check and see what back flower remedy would help support them because it supports the body emotionally. OK. And if the body feels emotionally supported, then physically it feels supported. OK, because we can't we're, we're all connected or spiritual or physical, uh, emotional. Or Everything. All, but it's all yes, connected. it's all it's. It, I, I find that the, the, the people, the clients that I get, a lot of them tend to be emotional, energetic people. Mm -hmm. So it, and that just means that they're just more in tune um, with how they feel or, as you talked earlier, about, you know, frequency, vibration, because mm -hmm. everything is everything is, is a frequency. Yeah. I mean, that's and physics. It's, yes. It's, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's the same as when. <laughs> Back in the dark ages, when people used to tune in a radio, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know you're trying no, to I don't find... know. I don't remember that. Melissa. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm of course, I do. Old. I'm much older than you. No, then. I'm older than you. <laughs> but but um, you know, it's this. It's the same thing. It's to be able to find the right frequency, the right channel for you emotionally, mm. physically. You know, some people going to the gym or doing a, a 50 minute spin class where they knock themselves out on a bike suits them and they're thrilled. Somebody else, 50 minutes doing a yoga class is far more beneficial to them because it suits how their body is and mentally and emotionally. So it's whatever it's it's finding the thing that suits you. Exactly. That is key, isn't it? That whatever the, the latest trend or uh fad is isn't necessarily going to you know or whatever has helped someone else to to their healing journey isn't necessarily going to help you you know we have to we have to look at ourselves as individuals and our lifestyle and and go back over to see what has happened to us through our lives yeah, as well yeah. you know kind of help and totally and, and like that's that's exactly um as i said to people with kinesiology it's not that they come in and tell me a lot of things and i go oh i think they need this their body says yes or no yeah. their body tells me and i tell, tell them yeah so that's the great thing about kinesiology it is completely tailored to you not you your sister and your mother that you're all you know put into the one group of yeah this is your problem yeah it's specific to what you need and are there different types of kinesiology or is there a, sort of one no there's a couple of different types there's applied kinesiology there's i am a systematic kinesiologist okay which means like I said earlier, we, we you know, it, it's a holistic therapy, but it's systematic in the way that we address the structural, nutritional, the emotional and the energetic. So it, 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 it deals with all aspects of you, whether you're aware of those aspects or not. OK, so so there is um, 
you you have a lot of boxes to tick there, you know, so you you go through that system uh, to come up with with a personalized treatment, I suppose, or or protocol for yeah, well, for completely, that person. completely yeah. tailored to to what they need. And I presume the number of appointments that that someone would need would vary as well depending on their needs oh completely yeah <clears throat> completely um if somebody was coming specifically for food sensitivity testing i might get them back twice maybe three times and that would maybe a month break yeah. because you have to give the body a chance if they choose to exclude whatever was yeah. recommended um it gives the body a chance to basically get a rest and clear out and start to balance up exactly but other people, it's funny, it, it tends to be um, kind of quite cyclical. You know, I have the same people come back to me every year, maybe every three, three or four months for a bit of a, you know, just maintenance. Mm. Some Let people go for a facial or get a massage or mm. go to the spa for a day. And that's their, the thing that helps them de-stress. I have the same people come back to me looking to just for a, a, a treatment doesn't have to be doesn't, doesn't have to be anything wrong but it's about keeping the body in check and keeping it in balance exactly so maintenance yeah yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. brilliant and um, can you work with children melissa i can i think the youngest i've treated has been two three weeks old wow and so did, that, did, that... did that baby have a traumatic birth no, but they weren't, I think, and it doesn't matter whether they're breastfed or they're bottle fed. Sometimes if they just have reflux or they have, you know, oh, yeah. the, the very bad, you know, trapped wind every time they eat or they have trouble going to the toilet. Um, and you see, that could be because the formula that they're on just doesn't suit them. Or, or if you're breastfeeding, because I know from personal experience, um, if what you're eating doesn't suit the baby you know and you don't think of it like that you just think mm. should they're being breastfed it's perfect but if it if it's relying on your food source you know the food source has to be the right one and if you were treating a baby or you know kind of anything up to maybe by the time kids are kind of eight or nine they're quite good at muscle testing uh, but before that that's where you would just use a surrogate you know you would use uh, the adult that's with them and that works in the way of you know if you put a a paper clip on a magnet. You can then put a hundred paper clips, and they'll all link up with that magnet. Oh, you know, they'll okay. all just magnet. They'll all mag mm. magnetically attach. So it's like the, the 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 adult that's with them either just to hold their hand or they have their hand on their leg. And I I check the parent. Right. I check to see what, what affects the parent first, so then I can uh, eliminate what I, I know what to look for. And then they basically just hold their hand, or once their their body is you know touching them. And you're able to check through them, so it's not the wow. not the parent that's been used, it's, but they're being used as the I suppose the well, conduit. Would that be the the right yes. word? Yes. Yeah. So, and it's all very non-invasive. The biggest thing you have to do is maybe take off your shoes. So very straightforward treatment for anybody who's who's um, nervous about any of these treatments. There's no nothing to be nothing to be nervous about at all. It's very very gentle and as you say non-invasive. No. Yeah. Very gentle, non-invasive. Um. I find the more information I have, the more I can do mm. for you and help. However, if, if you're somebody that doesn't want to speak about something traumatic, doesn't want to go into any great detail, that's fine because I can still work with the body and still help it release and heal. With yeah. You know, as I said, people, nothing weakens you quicker than your thoughts. And, and you so, can't get away from your thoughts. I know. Um, so the so the person doesn't have to speak about the trauma because the body just it's enough that the body tells you that there's a trauma there. This is it. You know, I can, yeah. I'm finding in different each muscle I test relates to an organ mm. in the body. And as I said, in relation to just as earlier, the large intestine relates to grief, which and the large intestine is all about constipation. So. I can ask, I can say, have you lost somebody? Is there grief maybe you're holding on to? Mm -hmm. And they might just, they, could, they might just say, yes. When I say, are you happy to speak about this? And they kind of go, no, I don't want to. Completely fine, because I can still check and see what backfire remedy they need. Mm -hmm. There's points I can hold on the, on the head or the body to help it. They might only have to think about it for its release. Um, there's also part of the kinesiology we were taught um, 
a lot about meridians and acupuncture points. So there's points on the body that you can tap to help move energy on that has got stuck around that grief or loss or whatever it is. Um, and then when that's all done, I can muscle test again to check if that muscle is still weak, because if it's still weak, the trauma is still there. Yes. But if it isn't, when the person thinks about it, what's brilliant is that they can think about it, but the body's not having a stressful emotional reaction. And that's how you know it's gone. Brilliant. Are there any, um, say, if someone is on, you know, medical treatments, on medications, are there any contraindications with kinesiology, you know, any uh, particular conditions that, you know, where people would need to let their doctor know that they're on back remedies or anything like that? Back remedies, only thing about them is that they're preserved in a, a tiny bit of alcohol. Um, so if somebody had addiction issues, you know, that you would need to be aware of that. They can still use it. I mean, you can get ones that aren't preserved in alcohol. And also it can be just the little drops can be put on the skin. They don't have to be orally taken. They don't have to be ingested through the mouth. Um, but as I always say to people who come, if they are on medication or they say, oh, sure, I, sure, I don't need this anymore if I do what you're saying. That's never. We work completely in conjunction with whatever their 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 doctor's advice is. And if they want to make changes, to go back to their doctor and yeah. discuss that Absolutely. first. Absolutely, every time. You know, yeah. It's yeah. not anything we do is kind of suggestion or recommended but it's never to take somebody off medication. No. We're not, that's not our. No, absolutely. It's, it's absolutely complimentary. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. There's room for, for everything. Have people that come in exactly. and say, oh, my an antidepressants and they're nearly apologizing because they're on antidepressants. And, you know, my view is if that's the space you're in, if that's what you need right now. Yeah. Have it. Exactly. Absolutely. There's no, who am I to say you don't yeah. need them? Yeah. It's not that, that's not my case. No, exactly. It's just to enhance their um vitality, enhance the, how they're feeling, their energy, you know, to help them in, in your way. And then obviously mm. whatever they need medically as well. Yeah, it's it's to get and if antidepressants are what get you to the level where you are now able to start coping exactly. with life exactly. or past traumatic things absolutely go for it you know that's it's the right thing for you so melissa you are trained in ancestral healing which i find fascinating i have had this i've experienced this uh, with you 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 carried it out uh, for for me and um i was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about this i think it's something that um is really interesting and especially we talked about it in the context of of Irish people in particular, you know, after, you know, since yes. the famine. So would yeah. you like to maybe tell us a little bit about the ancestral healing and, and how you came about being trained in that? So I think it's about a year and a half ago, might be, could be two years ago now. Uh, I did, and it, it's, I, I call it ancestral healing. It's actually ancestral alchemy healing. So, but it's just to, you know, shorten it. It, it, it does, it still does what it does in the tin, you know? Yeah. And so ancestral healing it's done distantly, so the person's not in front of me. There are very specific flower essences used in this distant healing. And if somebody wants to get that done, all I need is their parents' full names and where they were kind of born or where they lived most of their life. And it can clear when we were being trained, it can clear up to maybe seven generations back. And I found that absolutely to be true. But I also found, depending on the people I was working for, it could go back 12, 14, you know. Mm, I think you went back 11 on one of my sides. Yes, yeah. mm. it can go It can go right back. Just depends on, it basically depends on the group of ancestors, mm. <laughs> really, you know, yeah. what they're what they're willing and open to do what it what it clears is and like you yeah you mentioned the famine like how often have it, before say covid and interest rates and everything went mad people would you know if you called into somebody's house to say oh i haven't a bite in the house but if you open those cupboards there probably was there, there was 
there was food. You, you, you would, other than bread and milk, you would be able to survive. There would be food in the house. But that thing of not having a bite in the house, that definitely goes back to famine time, where, where there wasn't. There wasn't food, but you had huge fear. You had loss. You had devastation. You had anxiety. You had that whole thought process of just lack, just lack of just not having enough and thinking you'll never have enough. So if your ancestors were the people that were in this country back in the 1840s, all those emotions, they get stuck and then they become part of your genetic makeup. No different to everybody in your house being short sighted, wearing glasses. It's genes or once a baby's born within about three months, people go, oh, look, sure, she has the same nose as her granddad. You can't deny that. That is genetically handed down. It's the huge emotional tie that's in with those issues. So, so you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of talk about genetic he- uh, genetic healing, genetic pain, I should say. It, so is this similar? This is the same. But is it we're just kind of talking about the same thing here. Yeah, yeah, you. So, yes, if your ancestors have been in stressful situations or, you know, if you want to talk about you don't take Ireland, for example, you know, with the whole political situation and how many times there was unrest, everything in those situations gets tied in genetically, gets absorbed into the body and it gets passed down. So what the ancestral healing does is once I have the information to do that work, that those groups of ancestors, if they're willing, that that, that can be cleared. So, Lynn, as I said, when I, I, I did it for you, what happens then, it clears for you, it clears for your siblings and their children. So your siblings and their children, their children would be, say, generation number one, your generation number two, your mother is generation number three, her mother is four, five and six, seven. So it's, it's like an umbrella that gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So it, it clears as they, they talk about it. It's the, the miasms is what those traits are. Anybody who does uh, who has trained as a homeopath, that's what they they work off. You know, the miasms. The miasm is the, the fear or the anger or the loss. It's whatever has got tied in with the whatever physical surroundings or traumatic surroundings. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, it was very simple, as you said, all, all I did was give you, say, the names and the places. And then you came back, I think it was within about a week or something. And you left uh, a message which went through, I suppose, what the details of what found. you came across and what you found. And it's just absolutely fascinating. You know, and I think, you know, any, anything that we can do to help ourselves to feel lighter, let go of things we weren't didn't even know we were holding on to. You know, oh, I completely, just, just completely. And you yeah. also then you 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 stop it being carried forward into the next generation and the next generation. That's really how the carrying out this ancestral healing, how it now, it, you know, how does it impact our lives now and going forward? And that's exactly it, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Um, when I had the, the, the training done, so I had it done then on, on for my female line and my male line. And you're there and it, it's happening. I have, you know, I'm very intuitive in how I work and I have certain gifts that kick in when they need. And I was being trained and I had it done for me. And I sat there and I went, oh, well, I didn't really see anything. I didn't hear anything. Oh, I'm sure it was a nice day. <laughs> you know, this yeah. was a lovely day to be with like minded people. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And I went home and I said, right, I'm probably never going to use this because that was, you know. It, I, uh, all the things I expected to kick in didn't. Yeah. But when I woke up the next morning, I remember sitting up in bed and I went and I started, got very emotional and started to cry. And I was like, what is this? And I realized that, and this is so unusual for me to speak to, to you on a podcast that how many other people are going to hear this, that I was able to sit there and think, I'm not afraid to say this now. Yeah. I'm not afraid to tell people, yeah, this is the gifts I have. This mm-hmm. is how I can help you if mm-hmm. you're open to it. Not everybody's open to it, and that's completely fine. But I sat there going, I'm now not afraid. I'm going to the shop and tell them about ancestral healing. And I don't care if they believe it, mm-hmm. if they think I'm mad, because the fear that had been carried through my ancestors, for whatever reason, 
that was now cleared. Mm. Yeah, because you understood how you were feeling. And I understood the difference that it, it was about being able to, if a client comes in and say, well, they, and then if they mention different things and say, well, this actually might help you as well. And if they take me up on it, fine. If they don't, that that's fine too. But it does, it does make a difference. Imagine not carrying the emotional baggage of hundreds of years. Yeah. Uh, it was a fascinating experience to, to, to sort of hear your notes on it, but also made a lot of sense for me, particularly on, you know, one side of the family and actually it afforded me uh, it 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 made me feel um more compassionate yes. towards a certain situation or whatever, and it definitely made a difference to me having it done over you know with something that I thought I was over sort of years ago. Yes, you know, yeah, you think it, oh yeah, nothing, nothing to do yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. It doesn't affect me anymore. But it actually gave me compassion towards you know something that that had happened and um, understanding you know so I absolutely found it fascinating and useful Melissa thank you so much um you've given a really good insight into kinesiology what a treatment is like and you know how it, how it can help and benefit and I think that we can't deny how uh, connected our spiritual emotional physical selves are you know we can't uh, we you know we have to we have to look after every aspect of of our health and that's certainly part of it you know so oh, yeah uh, so definitely yeah so I think you've you've explained that really well thank you and um and thank you for talking about the ancestral healing too no problem thank you My thanks again to Melissa for a really interesting conversation and um, we'll move on now to the store cupboard staple for this episode. So we're going to chat about sweet potatoes. So they're one of my favorite vegetables. Um, but why are they so good for you and considered to be so nutritious? Well, let's start with the fact that they contain a mix of soluble and insoluble fiber. So soluble fiber can help to lower our cholesterol and help to balance our blood sugars. And insoluble fiber helps to keep our bowels healthy and keep us regular. The skin of a sweet potato contains about 50% of the fiber. So even if we peel it, you know, we're still left with 50%, you know, in the, in the flesh. So just to notice that um, when it comes to balancing blood sugars, um, if, if you have any issues with blood sugars, with diabetes, then steaming sweet potatoes would be better for you um, because baking or roasting actually releases sugars in the vegetable. You know, so um, if there's any issues with that at all, um, obviously that might be a better way to cook it. So thanks to their orange color, we know that the top nutrient in sweet potatoes is beta carotene and that is an antioxidant. Uh, antioxidants help to protect our cells from free radical damage. When we consume beta carotene, our liver then converts as much of it as we need into vitamin A. So just as a side note, vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin along with vitamins D, E and K. And so if you're considering supplementing them, you should supplement with care to make sure that you don't overdo it. Now, our bodies are so wise that when you get a nutrient from food, it is really hard to overdose on it. So that just goes back to the point that our livers will make as much of the vitamin A as we need, you know, from the beta carotene. Another thing to consider with fat soluble vitamins is that um, we need to consume some healthy fats with them, you know, in our diet and on our meal, um, because uh, that will help to maximize our absorption of the fat soluble vitamin. So when I'm suggesting some ways that you can use your sweet potatoes at the end, I'll also include some tips about adding that uh, healthy fat to the plate as well. So vitamin A is great for our immune system, for our vision, and it also supports our cell growth. And that means it's good for all of our organs because, of course, they're all made up of cells. And that includes our skin. Another really important nutrient in sweet potatoes is magnesium. So I have a previous podcast on magnesium because it is such an important mineral. And with modern day lifestyles, we can be deficient. Um, for example, high stress, you know, high levels of cortisol, we just leach magnesium and a lot of caffeine in the, um, also will hinder our absorption of magnesium too, you know. So um, magnesium is super important, carries out loads of functions, including relaxation. So it supports the production of GABA, which is gamma aminobutyric acid. And that's a neurotransmitter which calms us, you know, and helps us to, to feel relaxed. So actually sweet potatoes are good to eat in the evening time. 
Now, other vitamins and minerals that sweet potatoes contain include vitamin C, which obviously helps with our immune system and this time of year when we're trying to stave off colds and flus and things. Um, vitamins B1, B2, B3, B5 and B6, um, which are B vitamins are really important for our central nervous system. Um, it, they contain iron. And iron is needed to carry oxygen around our body. So for energy and for growth and development as well. And um, phosphorus is needed for growth again and for repair of all of our tissues and cells and um, for production of, you know, DNA and RNA. And um, it helps to balance and and optimize the function of other vitamins and minerals, like including vitamin D, iodine, magnesium and zinc. Sweet potatoes contain copper and copper helps our body to make red blood cells and keeps our nerve cells and our immune system healthy. Um, it's also involved in uh, forming or producing collagen. And we do think of collagen for our face, but actually we really need it for our bones and our connective tissue as well. And copper is um, can act as an antioxidant. So again, you know, helping to prevent uh, free radical damage. Finally, um, the mineral manganese is also in sweet potatoes and that helps our body to form connective tissue, blood clotting factors, sex hormones and um, bones. Um, it also helps us to metabolize fat and carbohydrates. So metabolizes how we convert food into energy. It helps with calcium absorption and blood sugar regulation. And um, it also supports our normal brain and nerve function too. So these are all the reasons why sweet potatoes are considered to be so nutritious. Um, actually, you can also find purple sweet potatoes and they are purple thanks to uh, the high levels of a really powerful antioxidant uh, called anthocyanins. Now, they're thought to be so powerful that actually the purple sweet potato might be even more nutritious than the orange sweet potato. You don't see them too often, but if you do, definitely recommend pick it, picking them up. Now, when you buy your sweet potatoes, they have a, quite a tough skin. So if you're going to eat them with the skin on, you want to make sure that you wash them really well. Um, you know, sometimes it's not always possible to buy organic for lots of reasons. So I have a blog on my website, which I'll put a link to in the show notes, which um, gives a couple of different ways of how to wash vegetables, you know, just to try and get rid of as much of the, you know, if they've been sprayed or wh whatever uh, dirt is on them, um, just to, to really help and make sure they're as clean as possible um, before you eat them. Um, so when we buy our sweet potatoes, how can we incorporate them into our meals? Well, you could peel them and steam them, maybe cube them and then steam them. And then once they're soft, mash them and use them as an alternative to mashed potatoes. So you could have those with a lovely uh, omega-3 rich oily fish like salmon or mackerel. You can make soup with them. And one of my favorites to make is carrot, sweet potato and butternut squash soup, which I uh, make with red lentils as well. I'll put the, a link to the recipe in the show notes too. Now you'll notice with all my soups, um, I make them really thick and I always add like a tablespoon of nuts or seeds. Um, you know, when I'm serving them, I add, add them to the top. Um, that's, that's a form of healthy fat, you know, that can help uh, to absorb those vitamins like vitamin A, those fat soluble vitamins. Now, if you're OK, you know, if your blood sugars are balanced and, you know, you don't have too much sugar in your diet, um, if it's not an issue for you, then, of course, you can bake sweet potatoes in their skins. You could then top them with some tuna. We only want to have tuna once a week and maybe add some olive oil um, for, you know, a healthy fat or, or olives. Um, you could also top them with some homemade coleslaw. Again, I'll link a recipe and add some seeds or olives or olive oil again to that, you know, for the healthy fat. Now, if I'm roasting vegetables for dinner, I'll a cube a sweet potato um, quite small and then I'll pop that in the oven as well for about 20 minutes let them cool and then I add them to a quinoa salad for lunch for the next day or two. Now they are lovely and sweet when they're roasted. Um, now when I add them to the salad, they just add a little something. Um, now there's so much protein and fiber in the salad. So the protein 
I'd have quinoa or buckwheat and some chickpeas or mixed beans and then obviously salad vegetables too. So all of the uh, lots of fiber in the beans or um, in the quinoa and then obviously in the vegetables. So they're going to the protein and fiber is going to help balance out and slow down the release of any glucose into the blood, you know. So uh, a wee, wee bit of roasted sweet potato in your salad shouldn't cause too much of a sugar spike. Now, obviously, one single veg on its own isn't going to keep you healthy. So that's all as part of a balanced diet. And we want to eat the rainbow of different colors because all of the different colors, you know, give us uh, various different um, health benefits. So hopefully, if you don't already, you might add a few sweet potatoes into your shopping trolley this week. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I just wanted to clarify that the podcast is for informational purposes only and does not substitute professional care from a doctor or trained health professional, nor does it constitute medical advice or services if you're in a, in a position to need either. However, if you find it interesting, you can subscribe to make sure you don't miss future episodes or sign up for my newsletter on lynnsharkynutrition.ie.